A big thanks to Finproof Wealth Blue Star Financial Advisory Services, authorized by Sanlam, for sponsoring this lesson. Welcome to Tumamina Teaching. This is your fifth grade nine history lesson for term two. I think it's a good time to quickly recap and go through some of the previous lessons. We started with the differences between communism and capitalism. Then we looked at where these countries that were prominent during the Cold War are situated geographically. And then we discussed the end of the Second World War in the European sphere and also in the Pacific Ocean. I would like to go through something that might be confusing for some learners. The USSR stands for the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, while the Soviet Union is just short for that whole term. And Russia is part of the Soviet Union with all the countries that are subjugated to Russia. Now you'll remember in the third lesson we discussed how communism was forced onto countries that were previously under Nazi rule in the eastern part of Europe. All these countries formed part of the Soviet Union and America was afraid that communism would spread through Western Europe and that would hurt their economy. So how did America respond to the threat of the spread of communism in Europe? They followed a policy of containment. Containment was the United States diplomatic strategy to prevent the spread of communism during the Cold War. This strategy remained the central strategy from America's side throughout the whole Cold War. And how did they do it? Mainly through economic support. Imagine somebody supporting you financially. You are likely to support that person back. And that's more or less how it worked in this case, which brings me to the Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan was an American program that provided support to countries that were devastated by the Second World War. The Marshall Plan was approved in 1948 and provided $15 billion for countries to rebuild themselves after the Second World War. The aid was sent to 16 European nations including Britain, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, West Germany and Norway. The plan was very effective and the US not only received support from these countries through the plan, but their influence in these countries grew substantially. In response to the plan, the Russians also implemented their own plan, called the Molotov Plan, but this was less successful compared to the Marshall Plan. So let's end off this lesson by comparing the two superpowers, America and the USSR, as if it would be a boxing match between two heavyweights. Remember, we're talking about these countries during the Cold War and not their current state. Let's look at them geographically. The Soviet Union was the biggest country in the world, measuring an area of 22.4 million square kilometers of which Russia was 17.1 million kilometers, compared to America, the fourth biggest country in the world, with an area of 9.8 million square kilometers. Now let's move over to the demography of the two nations. Demographics is another key term for today's lesson. Demographics is the study of statistics such as births, deaths, incomes, and the incidence of diseases, which illustrate the changing structure of human populations. Let's compare the two nations culturally. The Soviet Union suppressed the freedom of speech and controlled the media, while the USA protects the freedom of speech and also the freedom of media in their country. Now let's move over to their militaries. Now the military is very important in context of the Cold War. Here are some broad points, but do remember that this span is over 40 years. So during the Cold War, the military power fluctuated between the two nations. In terms of soldiers and tanks, Russia had a huge numerical advantage. The USA dominated the oceans with their large fleet. In terms of the Air Force, both parties were more or less on the same level. But more on this in Lesson 7. Now let's look at the two nations economically. The Soviet Union was the second largest economy in the whole world and it was based on Marxism. It was also generally self-sufficient. In other words, it was not dependent on imports of other countries. 
The USA had the largest economy in the world and had loads of imports and exports. Their economy is based on the free market system of supply and demand. That's all for lesson five. We'll see each other next time. Thank <laughs> you.